How there everybody and welcome back to another stock analysis video. Today we are going to be doing the company Columbia which is actually a sportswear kind of company. Now they do not have earnings. I actually didn't even know this company existed. However one of my subscribers Dave N said in my max income video part 2 another stock idea for a video is Columbia sportswear with the ticker symbol of COLM. So we're going to take a look at this company, analyze their fundamentals, and see what price we should be paying for this company. So with that said, let's get started with this analysis. We are going to start off, guys, with the dividend summary. This company does pay a small dividend of around 1.58%, which ends up being $0.30 cents per share for an annual payout of $1.08. Payout ratio is 19.46%. However, we're going to take a look at the payout ratio in regards to another metric, which is the cash flow, and we're going to see what the payout ratio in regards to the cash flow is because companies use their cash flow to pay out the dividend, not so much their net income. And doing that actually gives us a much better representation of how much money they have left after paying this dividend. The five-year growth rate on this dividend is actually pretty decent at 9.06%, and they have grown this dividend for one consecutive year. So as it stands when it comes to a dividend play, it's not really that reliable, at least for now, right? However, if you think that they might be able to continue to increase this dividend into the future at around 9.06%, this actually might be fairly, fairly good. X dividend day is actually coming up as of May 18th, payout date is on June 2nd, and they pay their dividends quarterly. Coming now to the calculator, we got the ticker symbol of COLM, market cap of only about $4.8 billion, PE guys of 13.66. So it's actually fairly, fairly decently priced according to their earnings with a current share price of $75.84. So yeah, we might actually be willing to buy this assuming that their fundamentals actually match this PE. Now, seeing that their annual dividends per share is what we just saw of $1.08, this comes out to be around $67, $68 million being paid out in dividends every single year. And after this is paid out in regards to the five-year average free cash flow, they're still left with $180 million. This is a payout ratio in regards to the free cash flow of 27.38%, which is actually really, really good. Nice and low. Anything for me under 60, it is fairly, fairly reliable and fairly, fairly secure. Coming now to their fundamentals, starting with their net income five years ago of $105 million to one year ago of $354 million. This is an increase of 237%. And of course, the big elephant in the room here is that two years ago, they went down to $108, down from the previous year of $330 million. Now, if you look this up, which year this actually happened, it's 2020. And again, their sports wear company involves going outside. We all know what happened in 2020, right? Well, this is kind of understandable as to why this actually went down. So any number that looked kind of funky when it comes to the two years ago mark, it's pretty much saying that, yeah, you can ignore it because it's a COVID related number. As it stands, this is a fairly, fairly good increasing linear graph. Look at now the free cash flow of five years ago of $287.7 million to one year ago of 319.7, essentially $320 million. Guys, that is an increase of 11% with a five-year average of around $248 million. Now, guys, free cash flow is cash from operations less your capital expenditures. You can actually see three years ago, for some reason, they went down to 162. And then two years ago, when COVID happened, you would think that this actually went down, it actually went up. And then one year ago, it continued to go up. What I think happened here is that because COVID occurred, their capital expenditures actually went down, right? So they actually made a significantly more free cash flow. What caused this decrease from five, four to three years ago? I'm not fully certain. Definitely something to do more research on. But nonetheless, it is still an increase. However, it is not a reliable increase because we do not know if they are able to continue this increase within the next couple years. To get a look now at the revenue five years ago of $2.5 billion to one year ago of $3.1 billion. This is an increase of 26.70%. And very, very similar to actually the net income. Fairly steady increase from five, four, three years ago, a decrease two years ago because of COVID, and then an increase one year ago, even higher than that of three years ago. So as it stands, fairly, fairly reliable graph. So when it comes to these three, yeah, the cash flow is the only one that's a little bit iffy. However, seeing that the revenue and income are fairly steady, you can pretty much assume that they might be able to continue their increase in regards 
to the next four years in, when it comes to their free cash flow. Now let's take a look at the total assets minus the total liabilities. Guys, if they were to liquidate all of their assets, would they be able to A, cover their liabilities and by how much? Well, if you actually do this math, you actually get that their current liabilities is around $2 billion. And not only that, they have been positive within the past five years as well and increasing too, which is fairly, fairly good. However, currently they are down a little bit from their previous year of $1.9 billion. Currently they're at 1.8, kind of rounded up to two. But nonetheless, they are still up and they have been increasing their assets minus liabilities. Total average assets around $2.7 billion. Total average liabilities around $895 million. Average assets minus average liabilities, we get around $1.8 billion. Now let's take a look at the share sales standing. This is the metric that a lot of companies tend to fail at. And fairly surprising, this one actually doesn't. And it's actually a really good decrease as well. Five years ago of 70 million shares to today, guys, of 62.9 million shares. There's a decrease in the five years of 10.14%. And from the previous year to the current year, this is also a decrease of 3.53%. We're looking at one year ago to today. That is a huge increase from 65.2 million shares to 62.9 million shares, as I said. Fairly, fairly good. Like, this is actually, not even fairly, it's very, very good, right? Most companies can't even do this kind of share buyback on the five year, let alone a 3.53% from year to year. That's amazing. And lastly, we got the cash equivalents, and currently they have around $435 million and their average cash around $631 million. Now let's come over here, make some assumptions, low, medium, high, as always, using three different factors. Guys, we're going to use the revenue growth, the purchase share buyback, and the required rate of return. For the revenue growth, I'm going to be using Seeking Alpha's growth tab, and this one was like, fairly difficult because they have a huge, huge, huge revenue growth year over year and a revenue growth forward. But, however, as you guys can see, when it comes to the revenue growth numbers, I'm going to lowball it. And here's the reason why. My job as an investor is to be conservative. It's to take the company as the worst possible time, the worst case scenario, even at my highest assumption, right? Even at my rosiest assumption, assume worst case scenario. Be conservative because the point of me is to find a good valued company, that is fairly undervalued to my worst assumptions, even at my rosiest points. So I'm going to lowball pretty much all my revenue growths. For the predicted share buyback, I'm going to be using the shares of standing graph that we just saw and be conservative with that as well. And for the required rate of return, keep it flat 10% to match the S&P 500 across all assumptions. So for my lowest assumption, let's say a revenue growth of 9%, projected share buyback of 2%. This comes out to be a whopping target share price of $101.44. From a media assumption, we are looking at a revenue growth of 11%. Projected share buyback of 3%. This is $109.52. And from a highest assumption, let's say revenue growth of 13%. Projected share buyback of 4%. This is $118.14. So as a stand, this is actually looking really, really good right now, assuming the current share price. However, let's take a look at the target share prices adjusting for debt. The way we do this is we take cash equivalents and we add the net debt to that cash equivalent, okay? If they have more cash equivalents than debt, this number comes up. And if they have more debt than cash, this number comes down. So you can see it goes up, right? It goes up by more than $100, which is amazing. So doing this, we get a target share price adjusting for debt for my low assumption of $209.95. For my median assumption, it is $226.18. And for my highest assumption, it is $243.47. Now let's add a margin of safety, 5 to 10, 15%, just so that way you make sure that you don't overpay for something, right? We're already making some very, very conservative assumptions. Let's make even more conservative, right? Just in case something really, really bad were to happen. Let's say a recession, a transitory recession happens. Well, in doing so, we will get a target share price between $178.45 to $199.45, doing a margin of safety of 5, 10, and 15% for my low assumption, $192.25 to $214.87 from a median assumption, and from a high assumption between almost $207 to $231.30. Guys, the current share price is $75.84. When he said, oh my God, when Dave said, it looks like there could be a few negative events coming up in the future for the company. The financials look great, very little debt and good share buyback. He was not joking. Oh my God. The 
stock price has to come down to 52 for my first purchase bro i don't know what numbers you're using but at least for me this is an absolute buy right now i like at least for me right assuming my assumptions this is an absolute gold mine right now and yeah i mean they they might have a couple of headwinds here and there, but nonetheless, their fundamentals look really, really solid, and that share buyback is huge, and on top of that, they have a great, great total assets minus total liabilities, right? Which is really, really solid. But you guys just saw right there, his target share price is 52, right? I don't know what numbers he's using. I have no idea. However, my target share prices are like 100, right? Now, what could cause this discrepancy? I don't necessarily know. But at the end of the day, guys, it comes down to what assumptions you make. Because at the end of the day, every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. And the more you pay for something today, the less returns you're going to have in the future. Every single number that you see right here for me, it is based off of these assumptions. So let's actually change some of these, right? Let's change this to like 2% and let's change this to, let's say around like 1% and keep the required rate of return the same at 10% or actually let's even change this to like 12.5% right let's say like you want a lot of a lot of returns when it comes to this well now we're actually getting a target share price of $59 so this might be the numbers he's using I don't necessarily know my point in doing this is to show you guys that it all depends what your assumptions are that's why I have this calculator available for free anybody could have it I also have a book value ratio calculator. It's not really a calculator, but it's, it's a ratio calculator for companies that don't have capital expenditures. And on top of that, I have a dividend tracking sheet as well. So I'm actually giving all of this out for free. All I'm asking for in return, guys, is help me grow my channel. Like, subscribe, comment. It really does help. That's really all I want from you guys. 30 seconds of your time and help me grow my channel. Would love to get to a thousand subs by the end of the year. That would be awesome. Now let's take a look at this company when it comes to their dividends. Now they do pay a dividend of a dollar and eight cents annually. So let's say that you put in one month's income at the average U.S. income, which is around five thousand seven hundred and twenty-five dollars. Doing this, this would actually give you seventy-five point four nine shares, which is actually an annual dividend of around eighty-one dollars and fifty-three cents. Quarterly dividends of twenty dollars and thirty-eight cents, and monthly dividend of six dollars and seventy-nine cents. So as it stands, it could be better. Right? I mean, we have seen companies that pay you in the two hundreds in the annual dividends per share. However, remember, dividends are only one aspect of it. They have a really, really good fundamentals, and if they have headwinds in the future, in the very, very near future, which I kind of have to agree with him on that, they might, especially because they're very niche, we might actually be willing to buy this at a lower target share price, assuming that they do have these headwinds. However, when it comes to dividend, it is not really that good of a dividend play. All in all, very, very good company. I gotta say, I really do have to say this. Uh, the fact that, you know, they have total assets minus liabilities that high, all their profits are good. The shares of standing is awesome. All that's actually fairly good. My one issue is their free cash flow isn't as predictable as you would say, right? Because it was going down from five, four, and three. And then in the two and one here, they were going up again. So I don't know where they could go with that. But nonetheless, aside from that, everything else looks fairly, fairly good. That pretty much does it for this video. Like if you like, comment, subscribe. It really does help it with the algorithm on YouTube. As I said, you guys can follow me on my new tech sites, Obituality and Rumble. I also have a Let's Play channel. Link in the description below where I'm currently editing one video. It's taking a while, but you should guys be getting hour long video at this point when it comes to that because it was really, really long. But nonetheless, I have a Let's Play channel. You can follow me there. The link is in the description below as well. And of course, before I forget to mention, guys, none of this was financial advice. Make your own assumptions when it comes to this, when it comes to investing, because at the end of the day, again, and every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. So with that said, peace out and be on the lookout for the next stock analysis video. And if any one of you guys wants to recommend one, please hit me down in the comment section below. I am 100% willing to do an analysis on one that you guys actually may want to see.